What an amazing day and a half it's been at the conference. It's been incredible, yeah, awesome. How many of you saw the keynote yesterday? Wow, pretty much everybody here, great. Did you see the demo that Sean did where he pulled out his phone and he spoke a question into the phone? And the system not just gave him the answer to that question, but it also went further and presented some insights that he may not have known about. Just think of what the ThoughtSpot system had to do to pull that off. It had to recognize the analytic intent of the spoken question, and it had to crank through large volume of data to find that one interesting insight personalized for him that it pushed to his phone. Powerful analytics made simple and accessible to everybody. Now, you know, I'm psychic. I know the one question that's on everybody's mind today. When can I get all the cool stuff that I saw yesterday? <laughs> and I've got the toughest job in the company. I have to give you guys dates. You know. uh, but I will talk about the timing of some of the things that's coming out. But more importantly, I want to talk to you about um, you know, how some of all the innovative things that you saw yesterday and many more things how they fit into our product thinking, and how they fit into our 12-month product roadmap. I'm Vijay Ganeshan. I'm co-founder and head of product management. I'm, and I'm joined by my colleague Dave Eiler, director of product management here. And let's start off with the big announcement. In case you missed it, ThoughtSpot 5 is now GA. Yeah. Very, very exciting release. Uh, check out the announcement section on community.thoughtspot.com for more information. And today, Dave and I will give you a few highlights of the key features of ThoughtSpot 5 as we talk through the roadmap. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, how do you prioritize what gets built in product? Everything that we build in ThoughtSpot is aligned with one of these six product themes. At the top, the three themes that you see, search intelligence with Spot IQ, our AI engine, a core value proposition of ThoughtSpot. Advanced analytics, the ability to ask advanced analytic questions of your complex data. User experience, end user experience with visualizations and collaboration. These are the three themes that are about making complex analytics simple and accessible. But we want to do this at enterprise scale. And that's where the bottom three things come into play. Cloud, an increasing focus areas, area for us as more of your systems move to the cloud. Enterprise class platform covering performance at massive scale security and governance, and data integration. And finally, embedded analytics for integrating ThoughtSpot analytics inside of your enterprise portals and custom applications. We prioritize features in the order of highest impact on these six themes. Let's dig in a little further, starting with search intelligence. As you heard yesterday, we announced Search IQ, our natural language search with voice, and conversational analytics. <clears throat> now, why did we build this? We wanted to provide an easier, more natural way for people to ask questions of their data. Many, many person years of work has gone into this project. Natural language is fundamentally full of ambiguities. You know, a, a, a particular sentence may have five fragments, and each of those fragments may have five different interpretations. You take the simplest fragment, you say how much opportunity, you're talking about the column opportunity amount. You say which opportunity, or well, you're talking now about the column opportunity name. We have a lot of key innovations in figuring out these ambiguities in the context of where the user is. And the AI engine that is backing this is a very, very specialized one. It is not some open source library plugged on top of our relational search. It's a very, very specialized engine 
that incorporates the knowledge of analytic query patterns and relational grammar. Do check this amazing feature out. I'm sure you'll love it. And send us your feedback in the feedback section of community.thoughtspot.com. This is available in beta in ThoughtSpot 5 and will be generally available in the first quarter of 2019. I want to highlight one key aspect about how we built Search IQ. Search IQ is built on a solid foundation of relational search. Now, why is this important? It's important for two reasons. One, that is what ensures that you get 100% accurate, trustworthy results. And that's what ensures that your searches continue to work at massive scale and data complexity. Two very, very important points to reiterate. <clears throat> One of the things that makes our search intelligent is personalization. When you go on Amazon and you search, Amazon gives you recommendations that are personalized based on your past interactions with Amazon. In ThoughtSpot, we can do that and a lot more. We can take into account users' past usage history, uh, their group memberships, the activities of peers inside of those groups, security permissions, and the characteristics of the data that we index to, to make very tailored, precise, relevant, personalized suggestions. In addition, users can teach the system their preferences, their vocabulary. Dave, what does that teaching look like in our system? Happy to show that, Vijay. So here I've got a Search IQ search, what are the most profitable products sold in Texas? Now the results look pretty good, but let's say for my particular use case, it's interpreted profitable to mean gross margin, and I actually want it to mean net margin. So that's easy for me to fix. I come in here, into this menu, I say teach, and now it's showing me, I'm, it's gonna, I'm gonna teach it what profitable should mean in my case, I'm gonna type net margin, and that's really all there is to it. I hit confirm, and then from then on out, profitable is gonna mean net margin for me. Now the great thing about this is it works in a hierarchy. So if I haven't set a definition for profitable, but someone in my group has, that, that definition will propagate to me. In the same way, if, somebody in the, if nobody in my group has, but somebody in the organization has, then I'll also get the benefit of that. And of course, this is totally controllable by admins who may be the most interested of anyone of what definitions people get. Now this personalization is not only inside of Search IQ. It's also inside of our current relational search. This list is personalized. And it's also right on the home page. So if I scroll down and I, and I see these Spot IQ insights, these, these are also personalized for me. This is, this is what I viewed, this is what my, my group has been viewing, so I can see it right here. Back to you, Vijay. Thanks, Dave. Search IQ is about natural language, interface, and voice, but it's also conversational. This, we think, is where the next phase of search is going. We see conversational search as the logical next step in the evolution. What is conversational search? When a user interacts with the system, the system remembers the context of your previous questions in coming up with an answer to your current question that you're asking. So the user's interaction with the data is, is conversational. Conversational search combined with mobile and with Spot IQ insights and voice will be an incredibly powerful interface, we think, for any user to quickly and easily gain insights of their data. We will have a mobile offering with natural language and voice in the first half of 2019 and the conversational aspects will follow after that. Let's talk about Spot IQ. As you know, Spot IQ is our AI engine, automated insights generation engine, that gives you the power of 1,000 analysts in your hand. In ThoughtSpot 5, we are making Spot IQ pervasive in the application and available everywhere in the context of where you are and what you're doing in the application. Dave, I have a question. How can a user get Spot IQ insights without even invoking Spot IQ? 
That's a great question. So as I was showing a moment ago, Spot IQ insights are available right in the home page. So when I come into ThoughtSpot, here are some insights that are based on my activity in the app and can give me some, give me some things to look at based on what I've been doing. But it's not just on the home page. So let's say I'm looking at some pin boards. Let's take this one, ThoughtSpot or ThoughtSport overview. Right at the top of the pin board, here are some insights that are relevant to the data on this pin board. So I can get those right where I am. We also take it one level deeper on answers. So if I click in here on answers, let's say I'm interested in monthly department sales analysis, I'm gonna get Spot IQ insights right beneath it that are relevant to this particular answer. So while you can go into the Spot IQ tab and do some analysis on data if you want, it's also available to you throughout the application in context with what you're doing at that moment. Back to you, Vijay. That's great, but what if I don't even want to log into ThoughtSpot? What if I want the system to simply keep track of what I'm interested in and push insights to me when something of interest is available? Wouldn't that be amazing? We are embarking on what we call self-driving analytics. You probably saw a preview of this in the uh, keynote session. Users can watch key metrics and visualizations and have the system keep track of those. And when there is something interesting, it pushes that insight to the users via email, Slack, or mobile. This is incredibly powerful. If you think of what's happening under the covers, ThoughtSpot and Spot IQ is automatically snapshotting your data and creating a time series. There was no time series in your data. It is being created on the fly. This requires an incredibly powerful compute and data platform to pull off. And, and, and that's the, 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 you, you saw the keynotes yesterday talking about why scale and architecture matters. It matters to be able to pull off these kinds of analytics. Again, powerful analytics made simple and easy and accessible. Show of hands, how many of you here call yourselves analysts? There are quite a few. We've seen some of the amazing, advanced, complex things you folks have done in ThoughtSpot. And you are going to love what's in ThoughtSpot 5. Dave, can we get a preview of some of the things we've added in advanced analytics? Absolutely. We've got a bunch of new things to show. So here I've switched over to the data tab. Now I'm going to go into this worksheet, West Region Sales. The first thing that I want to show is flexible joins. So those of you who have been in the product a lot might already notice a difference that I've got an inner join and a left outer join in the same worksheet right here. Woohoo! Yeah. Yes. All right. So inside, I can change and have multiple different joins in the same worksheet. And sometimes you need this. For example, you want to see you know, products with no sales. You need an outer join for that. So we're excited about that feature. The next feature that I want to show is uh, worksheet filters. So in the past, if you wanted to have a worksheet filter like this, so this is West Region, remember. So I'm filtering on Arizona, California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. You'd have to keep applying these filters over and over again in your search, which can become really cumbersome. So now you can apply a filter right at the worksheet level, and that way, if you have a group that's only interested in the West Region, they have this filter applied automatically to all of their data without having to do anything. All right. The next feature that I want to show is flexible aggregations. So let's take a look at monthly department sales analysis. So in this table, I'm aggregating in a bunch of different ways. I've got sales by department. I've got average monthly sales. I've got last 30 day sales. And I also have the percentage of sales that department accounts for uh, out of, the whole, out of the, all of the sales in that year. In the past, you couldn't do all this in one in one answer. You'd have to have multiple layers of queries. And now, you can, with the group aggregate formula, you can put all this into one answer. So that's flexible aggregations. Awesome. The last one that I want to show is R integration. So a lot of you have put a lot of effort into custom, custom R analysis. You've built scripts. They're very powerful. You want to reuse those. You don't have to go build all that logic again inside of ThoughtSpot. So now, you don't have to. Take a look at this uh, store clustering sheet, and if I, go in, if I go in here, I can see my R script right inside that I can edit in place 
and get the visualization out here, as well as have the filters at the top apply to the visualization. So we're really excited about this R integration in the product. Back to you, Vijay. Awesome. I told you you're going to love it. So you notice something odd here. I'm talking about advanced and simple in the same breath. What's so simple about advanced analytics? One of the unique strengths of the ThoughtSpot platform is that, that not only can an admin model complex constructs in the system, but a lot of that power is available for business users to invoke in search through analytic keywords. With keywords like versus, all, and, and, and over time we're gonna add things like fiscal and so on, business users can do very sophisticated comparison analysis, you know, share calculations, cohort analysis, binning, custom groups, and so on. I'm very excited about a new feature called user-defined phrases that we're coming up in the next release. This is the ability for you to define domain-specific phrases that map to complex phrases in, in the ThoughtSpot search, including formulas and filters, and save it off and you can use that as an alias in your search. This makes it easy for users to be able to ask advanced questions using a domain-specific language that they're very familiar with. You heard about Spot IQ AMP yesterday, our extensions framework. We will continue to expand our data science platform integrations with things like Python, Google Machine Learning, and DataRobot. You'll be able to define formulas that map to some of these algorithms so that the business users can simply use these words like segment or cluster that under the covers is invoking some really complex, sophisticated data science algorithms. That's what we mean by advanced analytics made simple. Dave, what about user experience? What are some of the things we have done in five? Happy to show that. So at the end of the day, even with all the analytical power that we've shown, if it's not a great experience, people aren't going to use it. We want you all to love being in ThoughtSpot, and we want the experience to, to make it easy for you to do whatever you want. So I want to show a few things that we've changed in ThoughtSpot 5. The first one is the new chart configurator. So I'm going to coincide of this sales by quarter. Let's say I want to edit this. And this new tab in here, the style tab, allows you to set data markers, colors, the y-axis range, and a bunch of other things that really make it so you can tailor this visualization to make it look exactly how you want. I also want to take a moment to scroll through this pin board. A lot of these chart types are, were available before five, but it's really great to look at all the different visualizations that are supported in ThoughtSpot. We've got heat maps, geo maps, waterfall, Sankey charts, conditional formatting, bubble charts, pivot tables, spider chart. And the last one, the table, which is what many of you spend the most time in, we've, told, we've updated in a big way in ThoughtSpot 5. You'll see that the text is wrapping here, and the columns are automatically sized to be the right width. This is going to save you all a lot of time when you're making these tables and making them readable by your users. So we're really excited about that. Another feature that we've added is automatic in, is include and exclude support. So let's say I only want clothing in this table. I can check that box, and I'm done. Also, we've got automatic exclude. So let's say I've got a bunch of nulls. I want to clean up the data, make it easy for people to read. I just check that box, and then all the nulls are excluded. So we're really excited about these advancements in the user experience that we made in ThoughtSpot 5. Back to you, Vijay. Great. Thanks, Dave. We will continue to invest in user experience, particularly in areas such as high-fidelity content presentation. Well, here's the big message in user experience. We want ThoughtSpot to service not just your ad hoc analytic needs, but also your standard reporting and dashboarding needs. I'll say a couple of things uh, that I've heard in this conference around reporting and dashboarding. <clears throat> One, the need for very classic reporting and dashboarding is diminished vastly because of tools like ThoughtSpot. That's number one. Uh, two, one of the things we're seeing in our customer base, and, and you guys are seeing this, many of the reports and dashboards that are being built 
in Tatspot are not being built by this centralized report factory. They built, they're being built by business users themselves. Two important considerations when you think of reporting and dashboarding. <clears throat> As we get deployed in larger and larger environments, we're continuously pushing the boundaries of performance and scale. We are preparing to certify ThoughtSpot on 500 nodes, 100 plus terabyte clusters. We will also be certifying million plus user loads, which we anticipate seeing in some of your installs where you're embedding ThoughtSpot inside of your portals that you expose to your consumers. Uh, I'll talk about data integration real quick before I jump into this slide on Embrace. Um, you heard the announcement that we are partnering with Alterix to provide yet another way for you to cache data into ThoughtSpot. If you're an Alterix user, you now have a ThoughtSpot connector available, and you can push data into ThoughtSpot very, very easily. It plugs into your standard Alterix flows. Embrace. There was a lot of buzz yesterday about this. How many of you think this is a cool feature? There you go, pretty much everybody. Uh, we're really excited about this. Um, the Embrace, the ability to, to query source systems directly. With Embrace, in addition to the data that you have cached in ThoughtSpot, you can now have the system query the source databases for some of the data. Now, clearly, this involves considerations of trade-offs. On the one hand, you have to consider the cost of data caching versus, on the other hand, fast interactive performance and leveraging some of the powerful features like Spot IQ. The first version of Embrace with Redshift connectivity is going to be out in the first half of 2019. And after that, we're going to be adding support for more data sources. And you'll see all the standard popular on-prem and cloud data sources coming after the first half. OK, embedded analytics. This is, a, this is a growing use case for us. We're seeing this more and more in, in our customer base. Some of you are embedding ThoughtSpot visualizations inside of your uh, custom portals and applications. Uh, many of you are using the raw data and metadata APIs and uh, using that to build, build custom applications without the visualizations. We are committed to supporting you in embedded analytics, and we've made it an important focus area for us. With application embedding, we will provide more capabilities for you to style the ThoughtSpot content that's inside of your portals or custom apps so that they match the look and feel of your containing applications better. We also plan to expose modularized, componentized UI components that you can then weave in into any HTML5 JavaScript application. Our library of public APIs continues to expand. And our commitment is that every API that we use ourselves internally, we want to expose as public APIs gradually over time. That's our commitment to you. Dave, how about taking a look at a couple of things we've added in this area in five? Sure, happy to show that. So here I've got fictional company Acme that is an embedded ThoughtSpot. Now, before ThoughtSpot 5, you could take a viz and put it into your product. So that's what's shown here. What we've added is embedded search and is much more powerful. So as you can see here, the ThoughtSpot search is embedded completely into this into this other company, Acme's website. And the great thing about it is that the search results, when they come back, are available to the parent app. So that way, you can take the data and make use of it in the way that adds the most value for your company. That's the embedded search API. Let's say you want to trigger it the other way. Suppose you're in ThoughtSpot, and you want to be able to trigger an API out to your, to your, uh, to your product. So all, that's easy to do you can set up a custom action. So here I've got a bunch, let's say I'm an uh, inventory manager and I've got a few products that are low on inventory. I've added a custom action in here, place order, that is gonna trigger an, a URL that you put into the ThoughtSpot app and that will send the data and the search results to your application to act on it in any way that you want. In this case, it's to replenish the orders of these parts. So we're really excited about the embedded search API and the data push API, which are new in ThoughtSpot 5. Back Great. to you, Vijay. Thank you, Dave. 
Let's talk about cloud. As you heard yesterday, we are now on GCP, the Google Cloud Platform. With GCP support, we're now fully available on all three cloud platforms, AWS, Azure, and GCP. As we move forward in our cloud journey, we're focused on two big areas. One, cost optimization. We want to look for ways to optimize costs of your cloud deployments through things like enhanced automatable elasticity. Second, we want to go cloud native on all of these three platforms. This allows you to leverage native services in, in, in the platform of your choice for things like monitoring, uh, logging, and security. So you've got a good feel of where we're headed with product in ThoughtSpot. This conference has really pumped us up even more, and we want to bring more and more awesome capabilities in product and, and, and so that you can realize this vision of making powerful enterprise class analytics easy and accessible to everybody within your organization. With that, we're gonna switch over to product enablement. I'd like to invite my colleague Alicia Avrak, Senior Director of Product Enablement at ThoughtSpot, to talk about it. Some years ago, when ThoughtSpot was still a very young company, I did our first customer training to a group of healthcare workers at one of our customer sites. Let's just say it did not go entirely smoothly. And yet, at the end of the training, several of them came up to me and said, ThoughtSpot is the best thing that's ever happened here at this company. So I asked them, why, why do you say that? And they said, we can see our data for the first time. We never had any access before. So although they were still happy to have the training, I knew we had to get better at enabling people to use ThoughtSpot. So we began to build on what we had and do more with learning and adoption and ThoughtSpot. And that's what we call product enablement. Thank you for being our earliest adopters of ThoughtSpot and for learning along with us these last few years. I love enabling people to have success with ThoughtSpot. So where are we going with product enablement? First, we wanna provide you with highly trained experts. So that means whether you're working with someone from ThoughtSpot or from one of our implementation partners, we want you to have people who are up to date on the latest on how to enable you to be successful. Product onboarding and learning. Look for an announcement that we'll be launching ThoughtSpot Academy with self-service learning for your users and things like interactive tutorials, classroom learning, and virtual sessions to onboard your new hires. Timely and accurate product information. So aside from just product documentation, we're starting to roll out webinars and videos to help enable people in the way that they want to be enabled. We're also starting to meet your users where they live. So Dave talked about and Vijay talked about some of the in-product assistance that we'll be offering. And finally, a vibrant community. Now that we've all gotten to know one another in person for the first time in many cases, we want to build on that. We had a good start here at Beyond with the launch of our ThoughtSpot All-Stars program. The All-Stars are a group of BI practitioners who use ThoughtSpot on a daily basis. And we wanted to gather them together to support one another and also to represent ThoughtSpot in the wider BI community. So as we continue to build out product enablement, we will be in touch with how you can get involved and please also talk to us about how we can help you have success with ThoughtSpot and better enable your users and grow adoption. 
Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. I'll just conclude by saying one thing. In, in product management, we've always believed that our customers are an extension to the product management team. A lot of the things that we build, uh, we build and we plan to build are based on the feedback that we receive from you folks. Please keep that feedback coming and engage with us on community.thoughtspot.com. Thank you all for attending. Mm. Thank <laughs> you.